And the last talk for this session is by Guy Ochoyon, Teo Adrai, Miki Elad, and Tomer Michaeli from the Technion with a very long title. <laughs> That's right. Um, hi, everyone. I'm going to be as concise as possible so we can all enjoy a well-deserved break. Uh, my talk is about restoration problems. I'd like to discuss some interesting findings about the difference between stochastic and deterministic estimators. Uh, I'm Theo Adrai. This is a joint work with Gaio Chayon and my supervisors from uh, the Technion, uh, Mikhail Ad and Tomer Michaeli. So um, we are going to talk about the fundamental difference between uh, stochastic and deterministic estimators. And it's not just about the exploration possibilities of the former. We actually draw an interesting connection with adversarial attacks these imperceptible changes in the input image that lead to dramatic changes in the output. And actually, we restrict our discussion to algorithms that try to, to be visually plausible, you know, the, the so-called hyperceptual quality. Um, surprisingly, all these topics nicely interact with each other in a way that we, that we managed to theorize. And this gave us uh, great insight uh, on how to improve practical algorithms. Um, so stay tuned for the bonus at the end. Um, so, image restoration, we typically want to retrieve an image X from a degraded measurement Y. Uh, here I'm advertising a well-known in-painting problem where we want to retrieve the missing pixels uh, in black. Um, note, by the way, that the, the word retrieve is kind of inappropriate since there are potentially an infinite number of images that could have yielded the same masked image. Uh, so, in, the, in these so-called inverse problems, uh, we prefer talking about restoration or estimation candidates. And historically, we, we used the classical approach of you know, regular, regular, regularization. It allows us to produce one deterministic estimation, and we are happy with it. But recently, we uh, leveraged the, the generative models in order to produce you know, many stochastic um, uh, uh, estimations. Um, it allows us to explore the space of possible solutions, so it's really nice. Um, and on the other hand, th there is no clear explanation on how to tell apart these two regimes. Okay, so at least from the benchmark performance, we cannot tell that uh, the stochastic model is far better than the deterministic one. And it's really puzzling because, you know, it's an ill pose inverse problem, so maybe the stochastic model should be better. Um, a note about uh, consistency. So it's a pretty straightforward concept to, to those who are not familiar with it. Basically, if we take the, the, uh, the restoration we propose, we want it to uh, align with the degraded image under the degradation, okay? Uh, this is very, very um, logical because only those consistent images can potentially be the source image, right? Um, if, you, if you take the source image and apply the degradation, you, take, you, you, you get the, the degraded image, so you want the same about your restorations. And for some reason, it's often overlooked in the literature. Um, but when you couple it with perceptual quality, with the visually pleasing outputs, it gets very, very important. OK, let's see why. So let's say you have perfect perceptual quality. Um, I summarize this by this mathematical expression, p of x hat equals p of x, because if I draw randomly some images from uh, my outputs, I expect them to, be, um, to look like um, I draw them from the natural distribution, okay, natural image distribution. And if you have consistency on top of that, so um, you apply the degradation process on x hat and you get the, degrad the degraded image, y, um, then you can say that you have the posterior sampler, okay? So the posterior is the very distribution that, um, that uh, uh, categorizes the, the, Im the natural images uh, that could have been the source under your degraded measurement, okay? Um, this is with Bayes' rule. Okay, so we wrap up this three-line proof in a fancy theorem. Um, by the way, it also works the other way around. So if you have the posterior sampler, then it must be uh, with perfect perceptual quality and perfect consistency. But the take-home message is twofold. So first of all, if you enforce consistency, then you can just train an unconditional generator and you obtain the posterior, okay? Secondly, and by the way, we could have built the, the, the paper just around this. This is super powerful to construct 
uh, estimators in uh, all kinds of inverse problems. Okay, secondly, consistent and deterministic estimators can actually never attain perceptual quality. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. Since the posterior sampler must be stochastic, okay, remember we are in, in an inverse problem, so there are many X's that could have led to the same degradation. So the, the, the X's is not a delta, the pair of X even Y is not a delta. Um, then you, 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 you must have a, a stochastic estimator to solve this task. You cannot use a deterministic uh, and consistent estimator. And this should really be puzzling to those of you in the audience that uh, are familiar with the literature of, um, of inverse problems, since we have a bunch of algorithms that are perfectly consistent, uh, are deterministic, and on the other end, attain perfect perceptual quality. So it's, it's kind of a weird result. Um, so either, either way, uh, these algorithms are not consistent, which, can be, which, is, which is possible. And on the other hand, maybe they are cheating. Okay, so let, let, let's see why. Let's have a thought experiment. Okay, so say I have here a 2D in painting problem. Uh, you are given the Y coordinate on a uniform two dimensional disk and you have to infer the X coordinate. Now let's say you have a deterministic estimator. Um, if it's consistent, you can try this at home. For every Y, you can output only one X, okay? It means you must have a one-to-one -one mapping, as shown here in red. Uh, in other words, we cannot achieve good perceptual quality, right? If you draw at random um, something from this red line, you are not likely to cover all the gray disk, right? On the other hand, uh, this was not accounting for our friends, the neural networks, that can achieve, you know, any <laughs> arbitrarily complex function. So you can still have this one-to-one -one mapping that is very, very erratic, but on the other hand, it covers the support. So if you draw randomly samples from this, uh, from this estimation, you'll get something that really, really, really looks like you've drawn them from the gray disk, okay? So especially our, all our tools like FID, Perception and Recall, that try to you know, um, check the perceptual quality of this estimator, will fail at detecting this kind of cheating, okay? So the immediate remedy to these erratic behaviors by the way, um, it's highly undesirable to, to, to get this because your uh, estimation is really, really unstable. Think, for example, about uh, uh, medical reconstruction and stuff like that. Also, you can see from where the adversarial attacks come from. <laughs> if you change a little bit of Y, you are likely to get a very, very big change in the output in X, okay? So the immediate remedy is simply adding a robustness penalty to the training object objective, okay? Here we actually trained um, uh, uh, generative adversarial network on this very, very simple problem. So two uh, linear layer, and we get, uh, without the penalty, we get the, 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 yeah, the, green, the green restoration in the middle. Okay, so it's very, very erratic, exactly as our uh, theoretical uh, analysis predicted. And if we add the robustness uh, penalty, then we get the boring purple um, restoration, okay? Um, so note that we can take a stochastic mapping. These are the two estimations on the right. Um, sorry, on the left. Yeah, it's your right, okay. On the right, and um, <laughs> if we add the robustness uh, penalty, it doesn't really should affect the result, okay? Because these are already uh, completely random, so they can assign a bunch of Xs to the same Y, and we are not falling under the, the problem of erratic behavior, or do we? So, see, the way we introduce stochasticity is by adding a little bit of noise together with the degraded input. And we found out it's much harder for the estimator to make meaningful use of the noise in the restoration process. Instead, it mimics the erratic behavior of the, of the pseudo-deterministic estimator, it completely ignores the noise, and collapses by drawing diversity from these imperceptible changes. Okay, and if you forbid this behavior with the robustness penalty, you instead get the meaningful diversity you would expect. Okay, by the way, here we, we see that uh, applying the robustness penalty to these deterministic estimators is very, very bad because it hinders their perceptual quality. We get the very boring um, purple line, and this is why you shouldn't do that. But 
On the other hand, if you do that on stochastic mappings, it's good. It's even necessary in order to get the diversity you'd, es you'd expect. Okay, so I'm going to skip the quantitative analysis because we are out of time. And thanks for listening. Thank you for the talk. Questions? Questions? Okay. Let's thank all the speakers of this session. We are in break until 3.30. <laughs>